Now we're going to talk about this. I. We know that with the real numbers, we cannot take the square root of a negative number. Which means up until now, we couldn't take the square root of negative 25. It wasn't negative 5 because negative 5 times itself is positive 25. So negative five is one of the square roots of positive 25, but it's not the square root of negative 25. There is no number times itself that gives us a negative number. And for various reasons that we're not going to get into, mathematicians found it um, very useful and uh, made math work more. I'll just put it that way. Um, if they said, hey, we're going to create a number. The number we're creating is the square root of negative one, and we're calling it i. i is the square root of negative one. And from this rule, i equals the square root of negative one, comes this masterpiece here. i squared is negative one. And this rule is just as important as I equals the square root of one, <coughs> if not more so. Because as we're gonna be doing our math with I's, are you excited yet? Whenever we see an I squared, we're gonna replace it with a negative one. How, how does this work? Okay, I said the square root of negative 25. Well, we have a rule that says underneath the radical, we can break it up. And I'm gonna break it up so that my negative is a negative one times the other thing. And then I have the square root of negative one times the square root of 25, which is I times five or five i so the square root of 25 is five i why because i is the square root of negative one who said they said who's they doesn't matter not important but we know that the square root of negative 25 would be five i Let's take a look at the square root of negative 12. Well, a lot of this is gonna be a review. We have one new step. That one new step is that negative 12 is negative one times 12. So this is the square root of negative one times the square root of 12. In other words, I times whatever the square root of 12 is. We can't leave it that way. 12 is four times three, square root of four times the square root of three, I times two, radical three, or how we're gonna write it, two I radical three. So either two I radical three, or we can put the I at the end and we can write two radical three I. But again, if you write it this way, you need to be very careful that you're not in any way writing that square root sign over the I. There would need to be a very clear ending above the three. So that's why I make it two I radical three. I don't want there to be any confusion when I write this. But either of these is correct. Okay, what about something we wouldn't be able to simplify further if it was a positive? What about the square root of negative 13? By now you should be realizing that a negative underneath is just an I outside. 
we can't simplify the square root of 13 anymore. So the square root of negative 13 would be a very quick I radical 13, or again, radical 13. I being very careful, and this is already questionable, being very careful to have a clear separation. That square root is not over the I. Okay, let's have some fun with this. The square root of negative nine times the square root of negative 25. So we're gonna have a rule for these problems. The negative on the inside becomes an I on the outside first, every time without question. That is the first step. Why? Well, then this one becomes three I and this one becomes five I. Three I times five I is 15 I squared. And what was so special about I squared? Well, I squared is always negative one. So our answer is negative 15. Let's do another. Square root of negative 15 times the square root of negative three. This would be I radical 15 times I radical three. I times I is I squared. Radical 15 times radical three would be radical 45. I squared is always negative one. Radical 45 can be nine times five, negative one times radical nine times radical five would be negative one times three times radical five, which would be negative three, radical five. Why did I say it is, I'm going to put it a different way. It's super de duper important. Okay. It's that important that I just said super de duper. It is super de duper important that the eyes come first. Because if not, if you do it wrong, something horrible is liable to happen. This is wrong. Do not continue this part of the problem thinking that it is right in any way. This is wrong. Negative 15 times negative three, that would be positive 45. And then the square root of positive 45 would be three radical five. But is three radical five the answer? No, negative three radical five is the answer. If you get positive three radical five, that means you multiplied negative 15 times negative three first, which is wrong because what has to be the first step? What is super de duper important? I radical 15 times I radical three then go on and do your stuff. But that I times I is I squared, which is negative one, which is where that negative three comes from. 
super de duper important. It's not so much an issue. Oops. It's not so much an issue with division, though. You'll still accidentally get the correct answer. Let's say we had the square root of negative 50 over the square root of negative two. Well, we don't have to worry about rationalizing or anything like that yet. But what we can do is make this I radical 50 over I radical two, and then those I's cancel. Radical 50 over radical two. And square root over square root can also be written as the square root of the fraction. Why did I do that? Well, because 50 divided by two is 25 and the positive square root of 25 is five. The answer here is five. I said, don't worry about rationalizing or anything, but from this step from 50 over radical two, what if you did rationalize? Multiply by the square root of two over itself. That would be the square root of 100 over two, which would be 10 over two, which is also five. Rationalizing gets us there as well. Either way, we want to get the most simplified answer possible without factors of a square root, without perfect square factors under a square root, and without square roots in the denominator. Square root of negative 48 over the square root of negative 3. I radical 48 over I radical 3, which is radical 48 over radical 3. And I would make this radical 48 over 3, which is radical 16, which is 4. That's one way to do this. But by now, hopefully you're realizing do correct things and get correct answers. Maybe you simplify the top. 48 is 16 times three. So this is radical 16, radical three over radical three, radicals threes cancel, square root of 16 is four. Or maybe you just rationalize. This one might be a little bit more difficult, but times radical three over radical three gives you the three on the bottom. 48 times three is 144. Square root of 144 is 12. 12 over 3 is 4. Lots of different ways to get to 4. Now, when we have something that involves the square root of a negative or an imaginary number in any way, we wanna make sure our answer is written in the form A plus BI. That means two distinct parts, one part, one term does not have any I in it. 
the other is the part that does have the I. So I'm going to go ahead and just write A plus B I up here. Wow, that was too high. A plus B I, still a little bit too high. A plus B I, there we go. Up here, so we remember uh, to put our final answer in that form for these. Is there anything we can do to simplify three minus radical negative 100? We can make this I radical 100. And what is the square root of 100? 10. Three minus I times 10 and I times 10 is just gonna be written as 10 I just like x times 10 would be 10 x. We work with i's the exact same way that we work with x's. It's just that if we had an x squared, we don't do anything special. We can't do more with it. But when we have an i squared, the i squared becomes negative one and we keep going. This would be our final answer form because we have two distinct sections. The first term does not have any eyes. The second term is where our eyes are. So the reason that this is in A plus BI form, we could even see it as this, three plus negative 10 I. A plus B. I. A would be three, B would be negative 10 when we have this. And since we can easily identify A and B, it's in A plus B I form. When we have a big fraction looking thing like this, two plus seven I over five, this is not A plus B I form. The top, is in A plus B I form. That's the standard form of uh, what we call a complex number. A complex number is any sort of number that involves I. And if you really wanna get technical, even five is a complex number because complex number is gonna be all of our real numbers plus all of our imaginary numbers. Yes, the I does stand for imaginary. If we take all the real numbers that we've learned so far and combine it with all of the imaginary numbers, we get the complex numbers. And the complex numbers work just like the real numbers except for that I being the square root of negative one. This is not in the final form of a complex number, but if we split it like we did earlier with the radicals into two terms, we're on our way. And then the I can't be in the top. This would be two fifths plus seven fifths I. Now, my logic here is seven I over five would be seven fifths times I over one. That's multiplication of fractions. And then anything over one is itself. So I over one is an I on its own. So something like this, since it involves an I, it has to be split into two distinct sections. A plus B times I. A would be two fifths. B would be seven fifths times I. Negative six 
plus radical negative 18 all over nine. Let's split negative six over nine plus radical negative 18 over nine, negative six ninths, that's gonna be negative two thirds plus I radical 18 over nine. So I've reduced this fraction to negative two thirds, negative divided by positive is negative, six over nine is two over three. And now I've done the first step of simplification, which is a negative underneath is an I outside. We can simplify radical 18. That's radical nine times radical two over nine. So we have negative two thirds plus three radical two over nine. And I'm gonna move the I to the outside. And then there's just one last thing. Three ninths reduces to one third. So negative two thirds, sorry for the angle, negative two thirds plus radical two over regular not radical three, I. And if you need me to put in an extra step here, if uh, the step to step isn't making sense, radical nine is three. So this is three I over nine radical two. And I moved the eye to be floating on the outside because that's what happens to an eye on top. Floats on the outside. If you were an eye, you'd float too. That's the whole point of it. <laughs> that was an it pun. Now remember, I did still say we would learn a new way to solve a quadratic equation today. We are almost there, believe it or not. It's actually gonna be a real quick thing once we get to it. But I wanna do a little bit more with complex numbers first. If we had negative two, minus four X plus five plus two X, what would we do? We would drop the parentheses and add because when we're adding, we don't need to worry about the parentheses. And then we'd add like terms, negative two plus five would be positive three, negative four plus two X would be negative two X and that would be our answer. Would you believe that if I replaced X's with I's, I'd get the same answer? Because that would be true. Here I'm adding two complex numbers. Negative two minus four I is the first complex number plus five plus two I is the second. Combine like terms, negative two plus five is three negative four I plus two I is negative two I. Our answer is an A plus B I form. So we just treat the I's like X's. If we had three minus I minus seven minus nine I. Just like we would distribute the negative if we had X's, that's what we do here. So three minus I minus seven minus a negative plus nine I. Three minus seven is negative four. Negative I plus nine I would be plus eight I. 
no different than if we had X's. Would this, would this be positive four I, negative four plus eight I? No, these aren't like terms. There are two pieces of a complex number, but even if this was an X here, we couldn't combine because it's not negative four X plus eight X. This isn't negative four I plus eight I, it's negative four plus eight I. Order of operations says multiply before add. So these are joined. You can't take the I off of the eight to add the negative four to the eight. Just doesn't work that way. Continuing to treat our I's like X's. Negative two plus six I times four minus three I. Well, let's foil. Negative two times four is negative eight. Negative two times negative three I is positive six I. Positive six I times positive four is positive 24 I. Positive 6i times negative 3i is negative 18i squared. Combine like terms in the center. 6i plus 24i is positive 30i. And then negative 18 times i squared is negative 18 times negative 1. That's the only new step here. i squared is negative 1. And now keep going. Negative eight plus 30i, negative times negative, that positive 18. And then negative eight plus 18 is positive 10. Positive 10 plus 30i. So when we multiply, it's just like if we had x's. But at any point, if we get i squared, then times i squared becomes times negative one. Remember, remember we did those special products, we did rationalization. Adding, subtracting, multiplying. Those all work just as if the I's were X's. Dividing is much easier than if the I's were X's. We're just gonna combine two of the things we learned how to do today, rationalization, and then splitting our answer to make sure it's an A plus BI form. And you might say rationalization, but we did that for radicals. What's I? I is the square root of negative one. All I's are hidden radicals. So we can't have the I on the bottom. So we have to rationalize. And how do we rationalize? We multiply by conjugates. And might as well put that in parentheses because we have to foil up there. On the bottom, we have a difference of squares. First thing squared, three squared, minus second thing squared, five I squared. That will be nine minus five I squared would be 25 I squared. 
And remember, multiplying by i squared is multiplying by negative 1. 25 times negative 1 or minus 25 times negative 1, that's going to turn this into 9 plus 25. And 9 plus 25 is 34. So, so far, the bottom is 34. The top is foiling. First, 8 times 3 is 24. Outer, 8 times positive 5i is positive 40i. Inner, 2i times 3, that's plus 6i. And last, plus 2i times plus 5i, that's plus 10i squared. 24 plus 46i, and then plus 10i squared would be minus 10. Twenty four minus ten would be fourteen plus forty six I. So fourteen plus forty six I over thirty four. That's how far we've got the answer. But we have to split it up now. Fourteen over thirty four plus forty six over thirty four I reduce the fractions. 7 over 17. 23 17 I. And that is division. 8 plus 2 I divided by 3 minus 5 I is this. Make sure you can follow every step I did and that you know why we did what we did. Before this point, we could add, we could subtract, we could multiply. Dividing happened, but it was really just rationalization. We never talked about raising i to powers. So an i by itself, that would be i to the first, just i. We know by definition, i squared is negative 1. And we could use just these two pieces of information to figure out all the rest of the powers of i. For instance, i cubed, we can write as i squared times i. That's i squared times i to the first. Add the exponents, we get three. i squared times i. Well, i squared is negative one, and i is just i. Negative one times i is negative i. And then i to the fourth, well, that could be i cubed times i. And we just found i cubed is negative i times i would be negative i squared. i squared is negative 1. The opposite of negative 1 is positive 1. So i to the fourth would be 1. Or you could go i to the fourth is i squared times i squared, which is negative one times negative one. Negative one times negative one would be positive one. Sorry about that. Let me rewrite this last one. So I had said i to the fourth can also be i squared times i squared, which would be negative one times negative one, which would also be positive one. So what have we found here? Well,
I to the first is I, I squared is negative one, I cubed is negative I, I to the fourth is positive one. I to the fifth would be I to the fourth times I to the first, one times I is just I, hey, it's cycling. Which means I to the sixth is negative one, and I to the seventh is negative I, and I to the eighth, that's positive one. I to the ninth is I, I to the tenth is negative one, I to the eleventh is negative I, I to the twelfth is one. In fact, every multiple of four power. So I to the four N, where N is any number, any integer, positive or negative, but the whole number part. So two, three, four. I to the eighth, I to the 12th, I to the 16th, I to the 20th, I to the 24th, I to the 28th. I to any multiple of four power is equal to positive one. And we're gonna use that as a shortcut to find I to any positive power, I to any negative power without having to count out the cycle forwards or backwards. Because if I asked you to find I to the 203rd, you're not gonna wanna sit there and cycle this out. We're gonna use a shortcut, use multiple of four powers. So if we had I to the 48th, since that is four times 12, that's a multiple of four power, that's positive one. I to the 13th. What's the highest multiple of four power we can fit into 13, 12. I to the 12th times I would be I to the 13th. And as a multiple of four power, I to the 12th is equal to one. And one times I is just I. I to the 23rd, what's the highest multiple of four power we can fit into 23? That would be 20. So I to the 20th times I to the third. Look at us breaking up these multiple of four powers like we do when we're simplifying radicals. It's so funny that simplifying powers of I works like simplifying radicals, huh? Almost like I is a radical or something <laughs> as a multiple of four power i to the 20th is a one one times i to the third is i to the third and then you figure that out any way you have you can either have it memorized that i to the third is negative i or you can go i squared times i is negative one times i is negative i so you don't even have to have anything memorized except I squared is negative one and I to the fourth is one. You can figure out, figure out everything else as you go. Because this method is gonna get us down to either I to the first, second, third, or fourth every time. Let's do a few more. I mentioned I to the 203rd earlier. How about I to the 103rd? Highest multiple of four is gonna be 100. This is I to the 100 times I to the third, which is one times I to the third, which is I to the third, which is I squared times I, which is negative one times I, which is negative I. These are kind of fun. Anything is fun once you figure out 
that you can do it. I to the 50th, highest multiple of four we can fit into 50 is 48. So this is I to the 48th times I squared, which is one times I squared, which is I squared, which is negative one by definition. One more. And then we'll move to negative powers of I. I to the 64th. Well, that is a multiple of four power. So it's one because 64 is four times 16. Now, with negative powers, you could still figure out that this is some negative multiple of four times something and get your answer that way. Um, I love this trick. When it's negative, we wanna push it over zero. So what's the first multiple of four we can add to this that's gonna push it over zero? And why multiple of four? Because we can multiply anything by one, which means we can multiply by any multiple of four power and 20 will be a multiple of four that gets us over 19. Negative 19 plus 20 is I to the first. So this one's I. Yeah, the pattern will continue backwards. I to the zero is one because anything to the zero power is one. So the pattern does continue backwards through the negatives. This also means if you do a calculator or something and you get an answer of one over I at any point, this is wrong. This is absolutely wrong. Why is one over I incorrect? Because you got to rationalize. This is a radical in the bottom. One over I, you'd multiply by I on top and bottom you'd get i over i squared, which is i over negative one, which would be negative i. So one over i would never be an acceptable answer. It would have to be negative i. That tells me when I see one over i, that tells me you're using a calculator because a calculator or a solver will give you one over i as an answer. I haven't taught you any way to get one over i as an answer. And I won't teach you any way to get one over I as an answer because it's an incorrect answer. This gets you the uh, correct form of the final answer every time. One more. One more. Let's do I to the negative 30th. Highest or first multiple of four that pushes us over 30 is 32. Negative 30 plus 32 is I squared. I squared is negative one. Next up, we want to simplify I to the 39th. Keep in mind that I to the fourth is one and any multiple of four. I to the eighth, I to the 12th, they're all one. So the highest multiple of four we can fit in is I to the 36, that would be 36 plus three that gives us 39. So that's I to the 36 times I cubed, which is one times I cubed. We have this down to I cubed now, let's keep going. I cubed is I squared, well, let's do this, two plus one. So that's I squared times I to the first. I squared by definition is negative one. So this is negative one times I, which is just negative I. Negative one times I is negative one. 